This is my intro. There are many others like it, but this one is mine. Hi there, greetings and salutations. This is Dan from Boilerplate Socialism, and it's good to have you back. Today I want to talk about something that is very close to my heart, that is very near and dear to me. I want to talk about worker cooperatives. And the reason I want to talk about this is because I see worker cooperatives as a means to an end. And that is to get workplace democracy into our lives and into our workplaces. If you're like me, you've uh, lived in a Western country, your workplace is where you spend the majority of your adult life. You see your coworkers more often than you see your family. And it's a place where you are lorded over by an owner or by a board of directors like gods. And the managers, with some exceptions, are their slave drivers. It's not a place you go to voluntarily, you go to work because the alternative is homelessness and death by exposure. It's about as undemocratic a system as you can get. But it doesn't have to be this way. You know, we're taught that you know, businesses and the workplace should be this thing. It's normalized to us, but it's not. And that's where the idea of the worker cooperative comes in. The worker cooperative is a business which is owned collectively by its employees and they, they make democratic decisions about how and why the business runs, and they share in the profits collectively. So instead of the surplus of the business going to a private owner or a group of investors, it goes directly back to the workers, or it's plowed and reinvested into the business itself. Uh, take, for example, the Mondragon Cooperative. It's the seventh largest business in Spain, and it's one of the largest uh, cooperatives on, on Earth. It has over 7,000 members, just in the main Mondragon, not to mention its uh, subsidiary sister cooperatives. And it's a good example to look at. I highly consider that. But I do want to talk about this because I do believe in workplace democracy, and I believe in cooperatives because I believe in offering an alternative vision to the one we live in now. You know, uh, I like the cyberpunk genre. I like the alien movies. But the least science fiction-y thing about those properties is the idea of the mega corporation. This is just reality as is now. It just has a different aesthetic over it. And I love these movies. I love these genre. You know, I don't really like the Cyberpunk 2077 game, but uh, I'm not a game reviewer. So anyways, the thing about these properties is that it's easy to hate corporations. Everybody does. But it's a lot more difficult to try and offer an alternative vision. You'll see characters or the heroes or the protagonists try and oppose these corporations, but there really isn't any consideration to what replaces that. How can you do things differently? You know, part of it is that these things are just entertainment, and a lot of them are just meant to have fun and enjoy. But a part of it is a wider cultural idea that you know, there is no moving past capitalism. And even in the most dystopian settings, there's no real, there is no real revolutionary thought present. It's all excised from it. You know, it's all about individual survival. But in the real world, we have to try and organize past individual survival, individual struggle. I like to joke that my philosophy can be summed down to apes stronger together. You know, to uh, to quote the Planet of the Apes movies. And that's what a worker cooperative is. It's where the workers come together and they represent their own interests in the workplace and they make decisions about it. Now, worker cooperatives are a very broad topic. They take on a lot of forms and they can be organized in a number of different ways and they can express democracy in a number of different ways. But there are, were, there are worker cooperatives all over Canada and the United States. They're in Europe. Uh, they exist in some form in China, Vietnam, Cuba, even in authoritarian states like the USSR. Workers were able to get their work, get their bosses fired, and they elected their managers democratically. Now, say what you will about that, but can anybody think of a time anywhere where you or anyone else was able to get your boss fired? It's literally never happened. And uh, if somebody does and know a story about that, I'll give you a dollar. Scout's honor. Now, like I said, this has been important to my heart because learning about worker cooperatives put me onto the path where I am now. It is easy to criticize capitalism, and uh, criticizing capitalism is a very lucrative business. You know, there are whole movies and books and YouTube channels dedicated to that. But you know, criticism only gets you so far. You have to put that into practice. I mean, for me, I learned about cooperatives through uh, Richard Wolff, a famed economist. We will link in the description. 
but I do want to get you thinking today. I want to get you thinking about your workplace because you're going to be there for most of your life. It's going to affect you most directly, uh, more than pretty much any other civilian election in most cases, what goes on in the workplace. Now, cooperatives aren't the be-all, end-all of building socialism or building a better society, but it is a step in the right direction. So I'm going to leave a few uh, links in the description. I hope you can browse. We, I welcome um, educated discussion. I welcome friendly discussion. And I hope I've given you something to think about. So thanks a lot. Have a fantastic day. And remember to like and subscribe. This is my outro. There are many others like it, but this one is mine.